What's up YouTube, Gushy here. In this video, we're going to be going over some things I wish I knew before playing Ghost of Tsushima. I've been super hyped for this game for a long time now, and now that I've played it for about a couple days now, I want to share a couple of tips and tricks with you guys. So with that, my first tip is to play around with the photo mode. I swear half of the time of me playing this game has been just taking photos and videos. I mean, check these out. The world that Sucker Punch built around Tsushima is just beautiful. What's really cool about this photo mode is that all the particle effects and the weather are all still in motion while the game is actually paused. And you could change the weather and the particle effects at will. So while looking at the options just scroll up and there should be a section for the type of particles and you could choose between like butterflies, fireflies, uh, types of flowers or leaves. And you could go down one option and change how frequent they spawn. Also, check out the different weather patterns that they have. I really like the sunset ones and the ones with the dense fog. And then after that, you could actually change the time of day, which shifts the sun's position. All right, so now that you have all your background set, you gotta choose a badass pose. Along with a simple standing pose, you can also do the different stances, so you have the stone, water, wind, and moon, which are all pretty different and unique. Also, swiping on the controller touchpad gives you certain actions as well. So, swiping left will make you play the flute, swiping down will make you bow, and swiping right would unsheathe and sheathe your sword. So I highly recommend checking out the photo mode in this game, because I think it's amazing. So, for my second tip, this is for all you people who like maximizing your efficiency. So the absolute first thing you should do in the game is get the charm of Nadi. Once you get to the open world, this is available to pick up. And so what this does is almost doubles the amount of supplies and resources that you get. And throughout the game, you're going to need a lot of resources to maximize your gear. So this charm is located a little bit below Archer's Rise. Once you find the question mark, you can just mark it on your map and head there. What you're looking for is Arrow Peak Shrine. Once you get there, you have to go through a little bit of platforming. And once you get to the top, you'll be rewarded with the charm of Naughty. And this leads me up to my third tip. And this is for all you achievement hunters out there. So once you collect all your supplies and resources, try to save all your upgrades for your Sakai armor and your Sakai katana. Fully upgrading your katana unlocks the perfect storm trophy. And fully upgrading your Sakai clan armor is needed for the trophy all in the wrist. As a side note, you don't get the Sakai clan armor until the second act. So what I did was focus on main missions throughout act one, just to get to act two and get that armor. Onto my fourth tip, and this is to just explore. There's gonna be so many times when you're doing a tale and a little fox or a bird pops up. You should always be aware when they pop up because they always lead you to some pretty important places. This is something the game doesn't tell you right away, but over time as you talk to villagers, they kind of let you know that this is a thing. And foxes take you to shrines, which updates your charm slots. And then birds usually take you to either hot springs, the start of a new tale, collectibles, or even just scenic views. And finally, for my last tip, and this is to do the tales in order. So for example, a couple of tales are broken down into different parts. But for some reason, you could find them and start different parts of the tales. This doesn't break the storyline at all, as most of the missions are interchangeable. I just wish I did them in order, so that I got the story in the order that the developers wanted to tell it. This also really confused me at the beginning, because I did a mission which was marked as the 6 of 9 parts, thinking I could finish the quest line a little bit earlier. But after I completed it, I also saw that there was a 2 of 9 for the same tale. So I thought my, my save file was corrupt or something. So just keep that in mind so you don't get confused. And that's all for my tips and tricks for you guys. I've been really enjoying this game. And I want to share as much information to you guys as possible so you can enjoy the game as well. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you found any of this useful, please subscribe so you can always come back and find these tips when you need it. 
Thanks and peace.